Welcome to the Welsh Woodburn Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be turning this gnarly bit of cherry into potentially a table lamp. So there's a lot of character in this wood, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to turn as again it's a crown piece in the tree so we've got lots of branches and things coming off this. So hope you enjoy this one. So to begin with I've got a lot of overhanging pieces that could potentially catch the tool as I'm turning away slowly and some of them aren't so secure as you can see with this one's a bit wobbly so I'm going to cut those off to begin with I've got a little wrecking saw I'm going to be using and that's just going to save me a little bit of turning time so a really th cool thing about cherry is it belongs to the prunus family which is like a stone fruit but on the tree on the bark itself we can see these little grooves now these are like breathing pores called lemtals and they help the, the tree breathe and that's the important thing to remember about timber is it's a living organism so even after you've cut it down and it's been seasoned out it's always going to take on and have moisture in and out of the plant cells because essentially it's a plant at the end of the day so people often forget that so if you've got a piece that you green turn you take it to the house it dries out it can crack and it can move that's the incredible thing about wood and it can be the frustrating thing about wood as well so we're going to be using a three quarter inch bowl gouge, a nice thick shaft to help support the cut over the edge. Tool handle nice and down. And we're going to work on the high spots, getting this into a nice uniform shape. So top tip, when you're taking away a big cut, the tool rest, the strongest part of the tool rest is right in the center over the bar that goes into your, your tool post. So the further you get a, along the tool rest, that, that's when you, you're more likely to get a weaker cut and it, it's more likely to vibrate. So if you're taking a big cut, take it from the center of the tool rest. It's a bit like when you're doing your chiseling over your workbench, you wanna do that chiseling over the leg of the workbench to give you more support. This is incredible. So it's been spinning and turning away and we've got which is a rotten bit and turning away and there's a load of wood louse in the, in the wood eating away or in Wales we used to call them granny greys growing up. So it's amazing that this is spinning and they're still in. So I'm going to try and get as many of those out as possible. Just show you this from the top view so you can see it's pretty wet this wood because it's green as I'm turning it but you can see the color change between the fresh turns and so I turned like a couple of minutes ago 
Now I'm using that as a guide, so I'm looking at that colour change and along the top here as I'm scraping. Now I've changed over to a scraper because I've got a lot of these knots in here. I've got loads and loads of end grain and I just find it's easier to not get torn out on this end grain because it's random, you can't really tell what it is using the scraper rather than the bowl gouge and we've got lots of lovely sort of characters and all sorts of funny grain patterns in here so we can't cut with the grain so that's why I've changed over to a scraper so we're just going to get this top profile blended in get this little shelf here blended in we'll do an undercut on the, the bottom then so it sits nicely on the table and we can start coring out the lamp <laughs> So here's the finished sort of profile. We look from the top edge, we've got a sweeping curve into a, a top. That's where the uh, the light fitting is gonna go in the end when I, when I drill the hole. So I just wanted it to be a little bit pronounced up and the light will be cast down then onto the lovely grain pattern of this. And we can see a lot of, a lot of character in this piece, a little bit of rot in the bark that we're gonna have to try and sort out with some CA glue. We've got a bark inclusion, which is really nice. And we can see like around the bark inclusion, we've got a load of buds that weren't developed. So these would be branches at some point that didn't fully grow. It's a lot like a, a burl. Again, more patterns in there. And around the, the knots then, so a lot of really dramatic grain pattern in there. A little bit of a chatoyance with the, with the grain. So we're going to sand this up now and give them a finish. So I've just sanded through the grits. And I'm going to use some spray lacquer, some high coat spray lacquer, just to, to bring up the, the grain pattern. A tiny bit of this goes a long way. And we're going to have to put a few coats on this to build up the, the layers. So we're going to wait for the lacquer to dry and maybe sand back in between coats and add a few more coats on. You can see it's really, really bringing out the gorgeous grain pattern in this one quite unusual glad I kept the bark on the bottom I've debated whether just to turn that away and do it into a shape but I think it gives it a little bit something extra so after we put a few coats of this lacquer on we are then going to drill a hole and core out the middle so I put a few coats of lacquer on that sand it back in in between I've got a nice smooth sort of finish overall so I'm gonna make a center point now with my parting tool so I'm just gonna cut in a little V and that'll give me a centre point that I can feed the drill into. You'll notice I've turned the lay speed down nice and low so we can do some drilling. And I'm just going to be using uh, a long boring drill bit. And I want to move my tool rest up so that the drill bit is directly travelling along the centre line of the bowl, otherwise we get wonky holes. It's worth adjusting, trying to get this perfectly right, otherwise the hole's not going to be central. That's it. And I can just drill out now the, the hole nice and slowly. So I've taken the lamp off the lathe now and sanded the bottom of the, the piece. So we've got the drill hole that's gone all the way through out of the bottom which is there what I'm going to do to make threading the wire through a little bit easier is expand that hole to make it bigger I'm going to be using a, a normal spade bit to, to do that the side hole now that will go into the larger hole that help making lining things up a little bit easier okay 
today we can get on to the threading part now. So I'm going to thread the wire through the first hole, bring it up through this hole, as far as it will go. I'm going to braid these wire ends together, just to make them a little bit easier to thread through the main hole. Got my main hole. And it's as easy as that to thread through then. Up to the top, give a big pull along the top. Put it flat again, pull that down. So we're going to be fixing the top connector piece in. So this piece, I've got a threaded insert that comes with the kit that I bought online. And it just, just makes it easier having a kit like this. Because uh, all the wiring is done for you in the plug. And it just makes it safer and more peace of mind if you're thinking of selling these. On. I'll show you how to secure this to make sure the electrics are nice and safe in a bit. So I'm just going to take the top section off. So I've threaded that insert into the brass fitting. I want to thread the wires through that I've braided. And I've got a, a self-tapping thing which is going to screw into the wood itself. That seems to be screwed in nice and securely, like that. So it's nice and flush to the top. What I am going to do is put a bit of CA glue for some extra stability. So just again, more peace of mind into this to make sure that over time, if the wood did swell or anything, it's not going to come loose. The CA glue I'm using is a company called Starbond and if anyone's interested in some really good CA glue I've got a 10% discount code in the description below. So we're going to do the fiddly bit now and start wiring in all the wires where they need to be. Now because I've got a metal top I'm going to need to earth it so the earth wire is going to be the yellow one in this case. Uh, the instructions with the kit as well are really really good. So you can't really get it wrong, which is nice. Nice and tight. So I've got my earth cable, which is going to go into this little terminal there. So we're just going to tighten that up, poke it outwards. I want to do a nice tight screw on the wire to make sure it doesn't come loose. I'm going to do a, a pull test. Yeah, that's not going anywhere, which is good. So I've got my terminal there that I'm going to need to wire into. And I'm going to need to wire my live wire there and my neutral there. Again, with any wiring or electronics, if you're not sure, get a trained professional to do the wiring for you. It just makes it far safer then. You've got peace of mind as well. But these kits are pretty self-explanatory. Always do a pull test to make sure that they're in place tightly so they don't come wiggling loose in there. Attachment on top, like so. And the top part of the wiring is done now. So we're going to need to secure this wire to the bottom now. So if I was walking along and I tripped over it, it would probably pull all the electrics out of the top, which makes it dangerous. So what we need to do is securely fasten this to the bottom. Now in the kit, which is really good, it comes with this little rubber wire fastener and we're going to be screwing that down. Very much like you get on your plugs, plugs if you've ever taken a plug apart, you attaching this inside the hole to make sure that wire doesn't come out. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's a bit fiddly. All it is is two screws that go in, pull it on that it's rocking the base rather than pulling the electrics out. So see it's nice and secure, pull on that, take over five pounds of pressure, not pulling the light out, securely fixed in place there. What you can also do for extra security is put a little rubber grommet into where this hole's coming out uh, with some flanges that come off, like spikes that come off to hold that securely in place. So that's an extra line of security. So let's give this a test. We've got the exciting bit now of trying them out. So I've just 
plugged them in, power off, power on, there we go, got the switch at the bottom on and off. All that needs now is a nice fancy shade for some of the juice to go over the top of it, and I think that showcases the, the wood nicely. So really, really like the grain pattern on this piece. It was a big old challenge to turn, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you have liked tonight's video, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment below. Always love reading the comments and replying to them. Really appreciate all my subscribers out there who, who regularly write things. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe to see more videos like this. Hope you have a great night. Dio Nostar.